All right, everybody, it's Tiffany, founder and executive director of Crafting Change. And I want to welcome our entire Zoom room to a, what is apparently a very popular subject tonight, which is rag quilts. And so we have Kathy Lawrence, who is here tonight from our sewing advisory board to walk us through some rag quilts. And she has bought some very special guests tonight, Robin Peters and Martha Richmond, who are going to also share some tips and tricks for constructing rag quilts. So I'm going to just turn this over to Kathy. So let me spotlight you. There you go. Hi, everybody. Crafting Change has two partner charities that are requesting rag quilts. Hopa Mountain, who is located in Bozeman, Montana, and that's a cold climate, and Bloom, who's in Fayetteville, Georgia, that's a warm climate. Hopa Mountain, if you don't know too much about these guys, Hopa Mountain supports their tribal communities in basically areas across the Northern Rockies and the Great Plains. They have requested rag quilts as part of a care package for children that were in the foster care system and have successfully made it to college. So they'd like to have a rag quilt to put in their care package to send to their college, college guys. Bloom is a private nonprofit care agency whose goal is to strengthen children who are in foster care and to help empower the families who are caring for them. And Bloom has requested rag quilts, as well as no sew fleece quilts, which I think Tiffany will put a link to that. We're not gonna talk about the no sew fleece quilts today, but they're looking at rag quilts for their tweens and their teens in foster care. So Bloom has a little bit different audience. Uh, tween is anywhere from nine on up. And of course your teenagers all the way up to 19. So we've got two different climates and a couple different audiences. So I'm gonna to try to outline uh, what we're looking at and kind of suggesting for you so you can pick who or what you wanna sew and, and we'll get going. Uh, I think our sentiments, our main objective for these is we want these quilts to be something that will last. They can be passed on maybe from older brother to younger brother, as well as we want these quilts to bring them comfort like we have a big hug that we're sending them from home. The skill level for this project is your easy beginners on up. Now these are gonna be a little, more, little bit more time consuming, but not hard. And I think in all total, I think Bloom has requested about hundred blankets and Hopa is looking for about the same, maybe at 150. Our optimal size somewhere between 48 to 54 inches wide by 54 to 60 inches long. As we said before, if you're sewing for HOPA, they want the college age, and so they should be a little bit larger. But if you're sewing for Bloom, you can also sew larger, you can sew small. So there's a lot of possibilities. But before you start on anything, the first thing that we're gonna go over is quilt math. Okay, I can hear everybody groaning. Oh. We don't wanna go over any math, but it's a good idea before you start any project to get a sense of your size and what the fabric is that's needed. It's kind of a road map. So I'm going to go over the long division here, but I also have a shortcut sheet I'll put up in a minute. So don't worry if this all doesn't just really sink in all at once because that's, that's okay. So if you start up on top here, our target size, like I said, in the width, it's going to be 48 to 54 inches wide. And our length is 54 to 60, depending if we're making a large one or a medium sized one. Now note here, we're not doing any infants. We're not doing any babies or children. So as much as you want to get those little kid blankies going, this is not where we're going. These are for older, uh, like I said, tweens, teens and college age kids. So first thing you gotta decide is what kind of a square do I want? How big do I wanna cut that square? And the second thing we have to determine is what's our seam allowance gonna be when we sew them together? And if you take your cut square minus your seam allowance, that'll give you your sewn in square size. Okay, so this first one, cut 
size square will help determine how much fabric you need. But this last one, the sewn in square size will help determine uh, how big the quilt's gonna be. So how do you get from here to here? Well, you have to take your seam allowance out because that's the part that you're gonna sew up around the square. And you can make that just about anything that you want it to be. I've seen them with one inch seams, three quarter inch, five eighths inch. Now a half inch, I think gets a little small because it's gonna be hard to clip that. So I would suggest you stay somewhere in this range. So just real quick to get from your cut size square to your sewn in square. For example, you take your, if you, if you're using this 10 inch square, you take your seam allowances off, one inch, one inch is just two inches. So 10 minus two is an eight. But we have, um, Robin and Martha and I kind of went over this and found, hey, you know, our optical op, optimal size is really an eight inch because that makes the best use of cutting the material. So in my example that we're using today here, I'm gonna be using this eight inch square. So our cut square of eight inch, and we're gonna use a five eighths inch seam allowance. So five eighths and five eighths is one and a quarter. Eight minus one and a quarter is six and three quarters. So now we've got our two numbers. We've got an eight inch cut square and a six and three quarter inch finished square. So this is my example. Obviously, if you make any changes here, that's up to you, but you will need to refigure a little bit of your quilt math before you get started. This is just gonna be an example. What we want now is we wanna see how many blocks these eight inch and six and three quarter inch finish squares, how many of these blocks do we need to make up our width and our length of the quilt? So if we use this cut square of eight inch and we use the sewn square of six and three quarter inch, and if we use the parameters of wanting our quilt somewhere between 54 to 48 wide and 60 to 58 long, anybody remember Gazentis from school? Like two goes into eight, four times, five goes into 10, two times. Well, here, brush off your gazentas because this is where we get down to some math, huh? So if I'm looking that I want a 54 inch finished width and I divide it by the finished width of the block, 54 divided by six and three quarters means I've got eight blocks across and that's a perfect eight blocks. Now looking at the length, if I have 60 inches divided by six and three quarters, it comes out to 8.88888, which is nine blocks down. So now we've got our answer. This one's real easy. Eight blocks across times nine blocks down means you'll want 72 eight inch cut blocks. So remember our 72 here, that'll come in handy when we go to do our fabric figuring. So this is for your larger size quilt. We're suggesting eight blocks by nine blocks, 72 total. Now, okay, so what if we wanna do a smaller the tween size? Um, we could kind of do this math all over again, but it seems like I don't need to because I can take my eight, let's bump it down to seven blocks across and the nine down, bump it to eight blocks down. So if we take seven blocks across and times the same six and three quarters, we have a 48 inch, which is okay because it falls into our width. And if we take eight blocks down times six and three quarters, that's 54 and bingo bango, you got seven by eight, you got 56. So for my examples today, we're gonna to be working with 72 blocks for the biggie and for the little sister, we've got 56 blocks. I think that's enough of quilt math right now. I'm going, I'm going to give you a reprieve on that for just a little bit. How much fabric do I buy? Well, if you really got a lot of closet full of fabric, like I know a lot of you do, you can just go into your closet, start pulling them out, start cutting, and then just putting it however it comes together and life's great. But some of us, or maybe if you want something special, you'll want to know how to figure out how much fabric it takes to go buy fabric. So how much fabric do I need? 
most of the fabric and materials that are going to be used for these is like a flannel or a cotton. So for this example, I'm using their standard 44, 45 inches wide. And here's my little rudimentary drawing. This is the full width of the fabric and this is the length of the fabric. I just kind of visually draw it out because that's just easier for me to understand what's going on. A normal 45 inch wide fabric, if we pre-shrink and cut off the selvages, we'll have maybe about 42 inches of working width. So now all I gotta do is I figure out how many times does eight goes into 42? <laughs> well, eight goes into 42 five times because five times eight is 40. I have just a little bit of two inch leeway. So that means I can get one, two, three, four, five blocks across that are eight inches wide. So our next idea is, okay, well, that's cool. But then how do I get to how many blocks I need? All right, remember our 72 blocks we wanted for the large quilt? We take our 72 blocks, divided about five out of a row, so we'd need 14 and a half rows, which you have to round up to 15 rows. So we come up here and say, okay, I need 15 of these rows by eight inch wide, 120 inches, or minimum three and a third yards. If you wanna be safe, go up to three and a half, three and three quarters, whatever you need. You know how sometimes when you get the fabric cut, maybe they're just a little G-jaw in the front or the back and you have to straighten it. So if you are actually going out to buy fabric, we would suggest to get minimum three and a third for a comfort zone, get three and a half yards. And as a note, this is for each layer of the quilt, okay? Now our little smaller little sister quilt, we only need 56 blocks for her. So 56 divided by five means we need 11.2 or 12 rows and 12 rows times eight inch width of the block, we need 96 inches of fabric, minimum two and two thirds fabric per layer for your smaller quilt. A, a note, if you change anything in these parameters and you need help figuring it out, I'm, I was gonna make a joke here and say, you can contact Robin or Martha, but yes, you can contact any of the three of us and we can help you with it. Now, this is one of the um, sheets that I have that uh, Tiffany has the links for. And this is just my little cheat sheet. Our recommendations are cut size square with eight inch. Our seam allowances were five eighths. So our finished sewn in square size is six and three quarters. But for this size quilt, the larger, eight blocks wide, nine blocks high, 72 blocks, three and a third, smaller sister quilt, 48 by 54, two and two thirds minimum for each layer. So this graphic is in the links. Math class is adjourned. We're gonna talk about fabrics now. When planning your quilt, we need to be mindful of the fluffy factor because you'll want something that the raw edges will fluff. 100% cotton is the best. And the best of the best, which I've discovered is homespun fabric. This is a piece of homespun fabric. It's 100% cotton. It's woven, so you can see it's the same on both sides. It's not a printed pattern, it's a woven. And this edge is how it comes out of the washer and dryer without any zigzagging or surging on the ends. So we know that we have a real good real good ruffled seam up here. This homespun would make excellent, excellent fluffy, floofy fabric. The next that everybody's got a bunch of these, look at our old friends, the fat quarters here. This is 100% cotton. It's also woven, but your 100% cottons are just printed. So, you know, you've got the back side, then you've got the right side, but they're all still raggedy. This one came out of the washer and we know that's going to ravel well because you can see, see how that's, that's working up there. So that's another highly recommended fabric is 100% cotton. And of course, let's not forget our flannel, our nice little soft flannel. Not only does this ravel well, it's nice and soft. So it'd be perfect for really any of the layers of the quilt, which we'll get into in a second. So your 100% cotton flannel 
And if you watch Joann's, my gosh, they've been, what, $2.99 a yard on these things. Sometimes they have a really, really good sales on these. So your quilted flannel, very good. And our, my last cotton is going to be denim. Oh, you remember like when you used to wear your denim jeans? I know this is back in the day. And you cut the hem off of it. So like when you're going scruff, scruff, scruff down the street, it would just be all kind of raggedy on the bottom. Yep, your denim likes to fray. Now this is two pieces of denim sewn together. This is a little bit of a wider of a seam than what we're looking at. I think this is closer to a three quarters, but you can see how this is just starting its minimal ravel and this has been washed two times. And now this piece, same thing. You can tell now, see now this is starting to get a lot better. It's been washed three times. So a couple points here, the more you washed your finished quilt, the more it's gonna ravel and get fluffier and just get very, very lovely. Now, uh, a note of caution on the denim. We're not including that on our other sheet right now because this is, um, tonight we're kind of aimed more towards beginners. And a lot of times you'll have trouble sewing all these different levels up into your quilt. So this would be harder to sew, but it's definitely not off the list. We just wanted to give a caution that if you're gonna go for your denim, make sure that it's 100% cotton because so much of this denim now in the stores have got spandex in it. You don't wanna get that stuff. You just wanna get the plain 100% cotton and you wanna get it in a lighter weight because denim can be really super heavy uh, super heavy, super thick and harder to work with, but it's lovely. It'll give you a lovely fray. We're talking about fluffy factor and we'd recommend you have at least one layer of fluffy fabrics. Um, you should have at least one layer of these fluffy, fluffy fabrics to get the fray factor. That doesn't mean they all have to be fray because there's a couple of, of popular options out for a backings and for the bottom materials. Now this is minky. This is a bubble minky and it's so soft, but the drawback on this is that number one, it's expensive. If that's not a factor, then go for it, but it's expensive, but it's so soft. But the other thing is that it's so slippery. And even though you might cross stitch your X's in the middle of your blocks and use a walking foot and everything, I just think it's really so slippery. So it's not gonna be on my list, but I wanted to show it to you because if you're more experienced of a sewer and you think that you can control it, oh man, this stuff's soft. But I think the most popular item that comes for your backing, this is fleece, also called polar fleece. And it is so soft and so warm that this would make an excellent backing for any of your flannels or cottons. But you can't make it all out of this because look at my poor little edges. They don't do anything. There's no floofy, fluffy, fuzzy factor here at all because this is polyester. And the more polyester you have in the material, the less it's going to fray. Um, Joann's has got three different levels of, of uh, polar fleece. They have Blizzard, which is the uh, less expensive brand, which will still be nice and soft, but it's um, the entry level quality, I want to say. Then they have the anti pill, which is what this is, which is a really nice mid level all around. And then they have the Lux, and the Lux is really expensive, too heavy. You don't need to buy that. So, how do I use them? How many do I use? Where do I use them? Okay, I've got on this other half of other side of this sheet, up here on the top half, this is a little chart. And what it is, is our recommendations for fabric combinations. And here, little asterisk, I didn't put denim, I didn't put minky on here, but it certainly is usable. But this is geared towards uh, maybe a first timer making these quilts who just want to have it um, as manageable as possible, okay? I'm not discriminating against the denim or the minky. But what this is, on this side of the chart, this is our three layer rag quilts which we're going to be suggesting for Hopa, because remember where Hope is at, Montana. So it's cold probably nine months out of the year 
And so it's okay to make these your warmer quilts for Hopa. So for the top, middle, and the backing, we're suggesting flannel, 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 all three layers, or cotton woven top, flannel middle, flannel back. And if somebody wanted to throw in their denim on the back and flannel and cotton, that'd be okay too. I think I don't want to overwork this too much, but you get the idea of where we're headed here. Now over here on the bloom, bloom is in Atlanta, Georgia, which I don't think they probably know what a snow shovel is, but they don't get too much snow down there, a little, little bit warmer climate. So we're recommending if you're sewing for bloom for those teens and tweens to use a two layer rag quilt. And our recommendations for the top and the back is cotton woven on the top, flannel on the back, flannel, flannel, flannel fleece. You could do cotton woven fleece, but you can see where we're headed here, what we're suggesting to use on the fabric. They're not the only combos you can use, but if you're looking for a starting point, this is what we're looking at. I know somebody's gonna say, okay, we know about flannel. What if I wanna put a batting in the middle? Um, we're not showing batting as an option because of just a one thing. Here, let me show a quick demo. This is flannel. And if I've got the flannel for the back and I cut, this just happens to be like a, a little pressed uh, pelon type fleece, a flat fleece. If I put that down next, and then I put my top layer of another thing of flannel, and then I stitch around my outsides, look what I have. I've got a sandwich that's got this white stuff peeking out. But if you want to use this in the middle, what I would suggest is that you take the time to cut your square. And we recommend to cut your square so it doesn't get sewn in as you're sewing around the outside. And that makes a nice little sandwich. You can do your X here, you can pin it, whatever you need to do. And you can feel where this kind of drops off here. So there's fleece here and then there's your seam allowance. And you just be careful when you stitch, you stitch around that and you don't get that caught in the middle and you still have your two layers. So again, this is an option if you wanted to use a batting or some type of a, a flannelette type of a middle section. But I'm thinking if I'm gonna do three layers, I think let's just do three layers, cut them all out, zip, zip, snip, snip. And I think it's good for me. Now, a couple little saver tips. I know this sounds like a lot of fabric, but there's a couple of things that you can do to make it not as expensive for you. Um, how about going to maybe the secondhand stores or thrift stores looking for some plain 100% cotton plaid flannel shirts? I know Robin's going to be showing her three, three layer plaid flannel and it is just so adorable. I think that would be a good idea if you can find shirts, maybe raid your husband's uh, closet, but make sure that they're clean and they're not thread worn and that they still have a lot of life left to them. So that might be hard finding that. The other tip I like, you guys can all, so fat quarters, they, they solve a couple problems because they're large enough that you're going to be able to cut several, oh, probably maybe, I didn't measure real good today on them. I just grabbed them but you'll be able to cut several squares out of one fat quarter. Plus you can just get them coordinated together. You can just do a real patchwork look. And our fat quarter fabric is all cotton and they have the fray going on. So if you've got leftover mask fabric or scraps or fat quarters, bring them out. This is the project for you. I'm done with this portion, but you know what? I am just super excited because we've got two awesome sewists with us today. Uh, first one we've got is we've got Martha Richmond coming up. She's gonna do a little demo on coordinating and laying out fabric, giving you a basic overview of how quilts go together. And then she's gonna show two of her quilts. She's made of two, two layer quilts, a flannel flannel and a flannel fleece. And then after Martha, we've got our Robin Peters, who's gonna give us the lowdown on what it was like making her traditional three-layer rag quilt. And she's also gonna show 
its little sister, the two layer cotton flannel quilt. So thank you, Martha. I'm gonna turn it over to you and I appreciate you guys giving me your time. Let's see what Martha is gonna do. Hi, I'm Martha Richmond from Greeley, Colorado. Um, what I wanna to show today is um, choice of fabrics, also how to actually construct your rag quilt and then also do a little show and tell on what you should do and what you shouldn't do because I have some fails for you. Um, first off, we'd like you to use your quilt you already have at home if you, you have some. And what we need to do is, is I'm going to kind of show you what you need to, to coordinate it with. What I would do for a first time blanket, you need to pick a fabric that is very neutral. And by neutral, I'm not talking about the color, I'm just talking about the pattern. So this would be something that's very neutral. This is a big piece of fabric that I'm playing with. And some of these that I'm going to add on there aren't necessarily the right colors, but you're going to see how this neutral makes this white pop and you really can see the white design. Um, you could try something like this. I've got some flowers. So if you have something that, that like I said, is neutral like this, you can add a lot of things to it. Um, here's one with a lot more colors. Uh, but again, I would say choose two fabrics when you're starting out on this, it just makes it simpler. So here's another one. I really like this one. I didn't think I would like that one, but it's very simple. Brings out the aqua color. Now, if you have a very colorful fabric, like this bird fabric, this goes with a lot of things. You could match this with a pink, with a blue, even an orange. Uh, same thing with this hummingbird fabric. You, this has got purple in it, it's got blue, it's got magenta, orange, yellow. This would go with a lot of things. And let's say we don't use the blue. Here's another neutral piece. Either one of these would go great with that. Just really picks up the patterns. Now you don't want to add two patterns that are in similar size like that because it's just too confusing. And I will show you one of my quilts that I did like that that looks horrible. And then there's something a little wild I tried. This is a flannel that I love. Like on, if you put it on here, you could do a couple different things. You could um, highlight and do your squares out of the orange and the yellow, or you could do your squares out of the blue and the purple to really highlight what colors you want in this. Or you could just do it all random and do crazy. Now, most of my fabrics are a little bit juvenile because that's what I do, but Here's, here's an example. Here's a uh, pink neutral, and then we've got this crazy owl fabric. Now you could go for something a little bit more subtle, like this fabric. You could even add a gray in there. You could do this fabric with a gray. Here's another fabric. Another one that's a little bit subtle, or you could go kind of crazy, and this fabric would go with just about anything because it's so colorful, and then you've got the neutral fabric. These little birds are green with white dots. You could even try instead of the pink, how about green with white dots? Mm. Or, okay, you don't wanna do the, the pink, just go with the blue. So you can really change the look of your, the whole composition by what you pick to go with what, obviously. But your best bet is to start out with something that's very neutral. And even, even this is neutral, it's just blue on blue and then pick a fabric that you like to go with it. This is something I picked out. I really like the fabrics. They really do not look good together. Okay, these are two fabrics that are uh, farm fabrics. I really like them. But as you can see, you've got the same size objects on there and it's just too much. So I thought, well, when you cut these out, when you're starting this, don't, don't cut out 72 squares until you lay out, cut out a few squares, lay it out and see if it's even gonna work. Cause like in this case, this does not work for me. So maybe we could change it and do something like that or even change it to go like something like that. But again, you've got a, a printed fabric and a fairly neutral fabric. Okay, the actual construction. 
when I lay out my whole quilt, I lay it out on the floor by rows and we'll take each row and I'll just stack it up in the order it's going to be sewn. So we do that the whole quilt down. Now I'll take this to my sewing machine and I take this piece and this square and line them up as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to be as close as possible. Take it to your sewing machine and sew across. Um, I think on some of these I've been doing um, three quarters. Uh, these are 10 inch squares, by the way, which we are not doing. But uh, so you sew across there and when you unfold it, it will essentially look like this, all right? Then you'll take your next piece of fabric, sew it onto the end, and it will look like that. So you're gonna do all your rows like that. Then after you have the rows done, then you're going to marry the rows together. And let me show you how you do that. This was our two pieces. We sewed it together. This has got a really big seam to show you. And this is what it's gonna look like. Now, then you're gonna take your next row and put it together. So you're gonna go down here. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, it's gonna be a little confusing. Okay, you're gonna take your next row, pick it up like this. And what I do is clamp it in the middle of the first square to get where you need to start. Then you go to the edge, try to make it as even as possible, and you start sewing down all the way down the row. Now, on this, the middle of each square, you're gonna have all these fabrics coming together. It's gonna be a little confusing. So what the best way to do it is to flatten them all flat so that when your machine goes across it, it goes across the top flat and the bottoms flat. It just makes it easier uh, and it looks better when you cut it open. Now on cutting, Okay, once you do, you do all the squares, you do all the rows, you marry all the rows together. Then you're going to have your quilt, you're going to go around the outside and do a seam all the way around the outside. Now, cutting. First off, you need some scissors, little clippers that are spring loaded. Key, because otherwise you are going to, your hands are really going to hurt if you don't have a spring loaded. Um, these are little scissors and then Robin has a different kind that she uses. Now what you're going to do on this is my whole thing's done. I'm just going to fold this over, take this and start clipping. Now when you get to this middle part again, you've got all these coming together and what we're going to do is as we clip along these, we're also going to clip each one of these fold backs. I don't know what you call that exactly, but we're going to cut each one of those so that you get a nice little rosette in the middle of each uh, square. Okay, this is one I made for a friend that's having a baby. Uh, this is flannel and fleece. This is flannel and fleece. Now when you do a combination of fabrics like that flannel and fleece, you don't want to do like a square two pieces of fleece and two pieces of flannel because they're not gonna be the same thicknesses. So that's gonna be a problem. So what you do on each square is you've got a piece of uh, fleece here and on the back you have a piece of flannel. Then on this one, you have a piece of flannel up and the fleece is down. That way, both of these will be the same thickness. And then this is clipped. Of course, right here, I forgot to clip that before I I put it in the wash, but this is fleece and flannel. I washed it a couple times, and then the back is gonna be the same thing. And if you're using a uh, fabric that has something in particular, uh, not a random thing, but something where you want uh, a particular image, you need to take that into account when you cut out your squares, um, or you're gonna have, you know, just like a little whale and not part of the arc. This is one I made that is two layers of flannel. And these, again, I don't, I, these are not 
according to our measurements. These are 10 inch squares. But you can see that the flannel really does uh, curl up and fray. And on these, you probably need to wash them at least, I would say three times, wash them and dry them. And between each wash, I take them outside and just really whip them. Um, and it gets off some of these little, little frays. Uh, and you want to get, we want to get as many of those off that are loose that we can before we send it off to anybody. So it won't be a mess. And then the back. And this is for my little knitting friends because we've got little sheep that are knitting. I just love that. Okay, now this is my fatal. I had two fabrics I really loved. I've got this fabric, it's a, a flannel that's succulents. And then I had this flannel that was cactus and they've got matching colors. And I thought, well, I could do that. It's, it's pretty the same size and it might be busy, but I thought, well, what I can do is on the back side of the quilt, I could put blue flannel and hopefully when that comes up through when you're doing your fray, that that would really differentiate, differentiate between the squares. Well, it didn't so much. Um, this is just, in my mind, I, I mean, I like the colors, but it is just entirely too busy, as you can see. I was thinking that the blue was really gonna come through and, and divide these squares up, but it's, it's a little busy. So this, is a, this again is a reason that you really need to, when you're starting out, I think the best thing to do is pick a very neutral fabric and then one with a print on it so that you don't get something like this that's just too busy. Um, and I hope that helps. Some of these, um, you know, like I said, some of my fabrics are very juvenile. Also, uh, a tip on fabrics. Around Christmas time, I think, they put these no-sew fleece kits on sale. Um, sometimes they even go down to $10, $5. If you buy one of these, you can use this as your fleece instead of going out and buying fleece. And these are wonderful. Um, this one in particular, because it's got just all kinds of colors. So you could cut this up and use it as your fleece instead of buying actual fleece. Because if you bought this whole thing for $10 um, or even $5, it's going to be a lot cheaper than if you go by and buy fleece by the yard. Anyway, I hope that helps. I'm sure you're going to have lots of questions. I talk way too fast. And now I'm going to hand it over to Robin. I understand there weren't a lot of um, rag quilts being made for Hopa Mountain. So I'm not sure if it was you, Tiffany, or Kathy, who was like, gee, we really need somebody, some sucker to start making some rag quilts. And it just happened to coordinate with Joanne's doing one of their crazy um, 279 a yard sales, which of course is like kryptonite for me. So I went to Joann's because of course I don't have any fabric in the house. And I found some fabulous um, uh, prints that I thought would be fun for a kid going away to college. If I was going away to college, this would have been fun. So um, this is my three layer rag quilt. It has been, it has gone through the wash one time. It weighs almost two and a half pounds and it's not quite 60 inches long. So uh, a little caveat that uh, these things become massive and they do become heavy once they have three layers. Um, I'm not sure if fleece weighs less than flannel, um, but it certainly would be bulkier. Um, so uh, as Martha said, it's very easy when you're like laying out and you have your two colors of your two fleeces and your two flannels or your two cotton wovens and your two flannels and every, you, you basically just have a two block quilt that is um, like a checkerboard. It's very easy, very simple. Wish I'd thought of that. Um, but I had little stars in my eyes when I was at the, at the store and I, um, these are, these are my leftover blocks. And I got like 12 different fabrics or something because it was because it was on sale. So um, my first, so this first quilt is a three layer. 
it is um, two. I what I did is I I bundled all my uh, fabrics into like a dark and a light, and then I got a plain uh, a plain gray that I used for my middle layer. So all my middle layers are this just neutral gray, um, and then I I paired a, a dark and a light with a with a with the plain and. Every block that is three layers, mine are eight inch squares. Um, I did sew an X through each of my blocks because these are three layers and they do a little tiny bit of shifting. Um, it's true if you wanted to do a two layer, probably don't need to cut, sew through the middle. Um, if you're putting a batting in the middle layer, you definitely want to do an X because it's going to shift a fair bit. Um, but look, I could probably make another quilt with these if I did a little quilt math. Um, this, we called it, I called it the beast. It lived in my car. I took it with me um, to job sites. And every time I was like had five, 10 minutes, uh, these were a gift from Kathy Lawrence. Thank you, Kathy Lawrence. This probably saved my hand. Although I did get my thumb caught in the spring, which wasn't very fun, I will say. Also, I'm a special snowflake and I did get a blister here. So when you when it comes time to clip your rag quilt, um, don't say I've set aside two hours and I'm gonna clip my rag quilt because your thumb will hate you forever. Um, this probably took me like 10 or 11 sessions of just snipping a few times and then when you know complaining that my thumb hurt. Um, here's Here's what the edge ends up looking like. So I have my, uh, when I was finished sewing all my squares together, um, I just did my um, three, quarter of a, three quarters of an inch seam around the outside edge. I will say it's gonna be hard to give this puppy up because it is lush. Um, when I ran it through the wash, um, I had not heard Kathy Lawrence's fabulous um, instruction to go over all the cut edges, all the snipped edges with a soft bristle brush to loosen up the, the threads. So my washing machine um, hates me right now and my dryer is not really happy with me either. Uh, I did open my dryer twice during the drying process to empty the lint trap because it was completely full two times. And my guess is when I put this through the wash a second time, I will have a similar amount of little bits. So that was a three layer, kind of heavy, all flannel. Then I am currently doing a two layer, which is flannel on the back, not flannel on the front. This is just cotton woven on the front. Once again, I picked, I this time I patched, I, I I um, matched my dark, um, my dark cotton woven with my dark flannel, my light cotton woven with my light flannel. Oh, this is also the flannel that's in the middle of the plaid Hopa Mountain blanket that someday I might be able to let go of and send to Hopa Mountain. Um, uh, this one I did not sew X's through, and um, this is not going to win any awards at the at the county fair because the seams are all, everything's just a little higgledy piggledy, but it's gonna hold together. It's gonna go through the wash fine. Um, and as I've been sitting and watching things, I've been slowly working my way through cutting the seam allowances with my little special snowflake thumb. And uh, we're, we're almost there. So then this will go through the wash and uh, can you, what is the soft bristle brush tip? Because I don't think I heard. Oh, so Kathy um, had told me that, af that after you sew it up and you um, cut all your things, before you run it through the wash the first time, there, if you just run a soft bristle brush over all these little cut edges, it tends to loosen up the threads a little bit. So they might, um, it might uh, fluff a little bit better its first time going through the wash. I want to respond to Kelly's question. Kelly says, wash fabric first, question mark. So there's two teams in rag quilt making. There's team pre-wash your fabric and there's team use it as soon as you get home from the, from the fabric store fabric. 
I am on the second team. I did not pre-wash any of my fabrics for these rag quilts. I have a friend who has been making these for years up in Canada and she never pre-washes because it's there's a certain crispness in um, the sizing of the flannel um, that kind of helps hold it together when you're sewing it all together. So you get a crisper cut, you don't have to iron, no. I'm team. I'm team pre-wash, and Robin is team no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I agree with Robin on everything that she said. Your only considerations for pre-washing or not is to make sure that your materials are color fast, mm -hmm. because if they're going to bleed, and you have contrasting fabrics, you don't want your red to bleed onto the pink. Okay, and like if you're using thrift store shirts that you found obviously you're going to wash those a couple of times you know there are exceptions to the rules um, i'm also do not wash first all right i cut it out put it together sew it clip it then i wash it even if you're mixing a flannel and a fleece you would do that yep i do that okay um you're probably not supposed to but i do it and it looks fine yeah um, now, if I had like, you know, a dark red or something like, you know, Kathy was saying, yeah, you, you need to do something different because the red's going to bleed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you just but, have to use a couple of color catchers in the wash. Right, mm -hmm. right. But um, I, I think they seem to fray better if you do not wash them first, but that's me. Oh, I just had one more thing um, for all you fat quarter kings and queens is that you can get four eight inch blocks. Re regular stitching foot is fine unless you're having a problem with everything shifting. And then you might wanna try a walking foot. Well, I wanna thank everybody for coming to our super special rag quilt uh, class. I wanna thank Kathy and Robin and Martha for all of their expertise. Um, all of our resources are up on both our Hopa Mountain and Bloom board on Pinterest um, for this project. Uh, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. So that's it for us. Stick around. We'll just have some more time in the Zoom room. So night, everybody.